In today's video, I'm going to be going over five really useful tips for doing visual effects in Blender. So here we go. Tip number one is working with HDRIs. Sometimes you find the perfect HDRI and you get it rotated in your scene just right, but the sun is in the wrong place and the lighting direction doesn't quite work. Most people don't realise you can paint the sun out of the HDRI and then use a sun lamp separately to have more control. I would usually do this in Nuke but I'm going to show how to do it in Blender for people that don't want to use different software. So jump into the image editor and pull in the HDRI, change into paint mode and select the clone tool, then open the settings in the menu on the right and select the HDRI as the image. You can then right click and drag to move this around like a stencil in sculpt mode, so place a clean patch of the sky over the sun and then paint over it. Sometimes getting the gradient to look natural can be a bit tricky. I usually use the smear brush to smooth the transition of the bright areas. Once that's done, save the image out as an HDRI or EXR file to preserve the dynamic range and bring it back into your scene. Now you can have all of the nice tonal lighting from the colours of the HDRI and it will reflect in the glossy materials. And adding in the sun lamp also gives you independent control over the strength, colour and direction of the sunlight separately from the HDRI. Tip number two is for rendering a reflections pass in Blender. This tip is for anyone that's ever wondered if it's possible to render reflections in Blender the same way you can render shadows with a shadow catcher. The short answer, sadly, is you can't. There's no built-in way to do this in Blender, but I do have a trick that works really well with a bit of compositing. The way I render reflections for any of my scenes is I put a completely black material on all of the surfaces that will have reflections in the shot. The roughness of the black material will depend on the surface you're trying to emulate. In this example, my kitchen countertop is fairly glossy, so I turned the roughness value right down to get some pretty crisp reflections. The idea with this is it will act like a mirror and give you the reflection of the objects in your scene. The only problem with this is it also reflects everything else, including the world lighting or HDRI in your scene. So set the value of the world lighting to zero, which will make it completely black. Annoyingly, now all the lighting influence that was coming from the world lighting or the HDRI is now also gone. So I add some of the default blender lights into the scene and put them in similar positions to light the models the way they were lit from the HDRI. You have to be careful to place them somewhere they won't show up in the reflections at any point like this. Once that's set up, you can render it on black and then in compositing you can plus or screen this over the top of your live action footage. Plus or screen are both blending modes that will make anything black transparent and anything that's white opaque, then anything in between will have varying levels of opacity depending on the brightness. So essentially the brightest reflections will be more visible and anything that's darker will be more transparent, just like in real life. This works really well and is the best way i found to render reflections in Blender. Tip number three is using file output nodes. This tip is extremely useful if you're rendering multiple passes for one visual effect shot. When it comes to rendering, most people probably just use the built-in output in the settings in Blender. But if you're doing VFX then quite often you want to render multiple passes for one shot at once. For example in the scene I was showing earlier I had the main render of the plates and then also a shadow pass and a reflection pass, so there were three. And the default output in Blender only has options for one, so you have to render something and then change the destination and the name and then render again. The downside of this is obviously going back and forth between render settings when you're changing the names and things, but also you have to be at your computer to set off the next render once you've changed the path. But there is another way. I use file output nodes for all of my rendering in the compositor. This is an alternative to using the default output in Blender and it's much better for visual effects. You can have a setup for each of your view layers in your scene. For each one, I add a file output node and connect up all the channels I want included in my render. If you're not rendering to EXRs with multiple channels, you can just connect the image output and that will be all you need. The reason I use file output nodes is because when you press render, it will render all three at once back to back. So I can set off a render before I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning, all three image sequences will be rendered. If I did this with a default output, I'd have to do one at a time and I'd have to actually wait for one to finish and then set off the next one. This is a real time saver for long renders as you can do them all together while you're sleeping or away from your computer. My next tip is for camera tracking in Blender. If like me you have a startup file that's a bit different from the Blender default, you might find it very annoying how pressing setup tracking scene changes all of your settings each time when you're using 3D camera tracking in Blender. For example, it creates two new view layers called foreground and background and it also adds a whole compositing template to the compositor that's completely useless and it also messes with the render setup that I already have. So instead of pressing setup tracking scene, you can actually just solve the camera and then add a new camera into your scene and put a camera tracker constraint onto it. This essentially does the same thing as pressing setup tracking scene except it doesn't change any of your other settings. If your camera isn't quite in the right place you can turn on motion tracking view in the viewport to see the tracking points and then line up the geometry manually. I'd really recommend doing this over pressing setup tracking scene if you don't want Blender adding any useless view layers and nodes into the compositor when you don't want it to. And my final tip is relative file paths. This next one is really useful for staying organised with your projects and saving time setting up where renders are going for each shot. In the output path for where the render is going you can add two slashes like this to tell the render to go into the same directory as where the Blender file itself is saved. You could just leave it there but that's not very organised. What I do instead is add two dots which tells Blender to go back up one folder level from where the Blender file is saved and then adding another slash and typing a folder name will tell Blender to go inside of that folder. In this case I tell it to go into my renders folder which is the same for every shot because I create my folders automatically so they're identical for every project. 
You can go even further if you like and create subfolders inside of that. For example, a folder for the beauty render, utilities, shadows, or reflections in this case. For my folder structure, the render folder already exists, but any subfolders don't currently exist yet. But by adding another slash and typing in the folder name, Blender will automatically create the folders if they don't exist to complete the path for you. Then on the end, just add in the name you want to call the image sequence and render it. If you're going to be doing this a lot, I suggest setting it up once and then saving that as your Blender startup file. That way it's always going to be set up, and then wherever you save the Blender file, your renders will also automatically go into that location without having to set up the paths each time. And there we go, I think those are all pretty niche but very handy tips. They're all just little tricks that I've come across over the few years of using Blender to do visual effects, and I thought I would share them. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.